Hey Mechatronic students. In this video we're going to be talking about the FANUC robot and creating our very first motion control programs. So we're going to keep it uh, short and sweet and focus on creating a new program and running that program and then in future videos we'll get into details about um, all the different options there are in defining points within the program. So short and simple, how to create a new program and how to run it. So let's dive into the details. So um, with our teach pendant, that's the first thing we're going to fire up here, is a new program. And to get to the menu of programs, we're just going to hit the select button. Select means you know, selecting the program that you want to run. So within this option, you can see um, 144 some different programs that are listed. But what we're going to do is to create a new program. And the name of the program, we can use um, this little options and keyboard. So uh, using the touch screen, select keyboard. And I'm going to call this one um, underscore mech uh, something or other. So let me get into the details. Um, we can pull up different menus here. So there's my underscore. And then I can use the alpha key here, shift mech. And get another underscore in there. And I call it first, I guess. That would be a good one for it. So once we have the name of the program, a couple things about the naming convention. You can't have any spaces. And uh, I think that's the, the basics of it. You can't have any spaces between things. So using some underscores to separate things, that works pretty slick. Then just hit the exit key. Or maybe this exit key. There we go. So the name of the program is underscore mech underscore first. All right. Then if we hit the enter key, it brings us into the actual programming menu. We're on line number one here. All right. So... To program this, um, I guess we'll have a, a basic option here. I'm going to go back to the robot cell itself, and it's got a, a nice template over here that we can use. Um, I'm going to make a program that's going to follow this square, this outer square, all the way around, and then return back home. Okay. So let's get into that. Um, we're just going to be jogging the robot around and then recording points as we go. So um, we've seen how to jog in world mode. I guess a couple of things worth mentioning is um, your user frames matter, uh, your, your tool frames matter. So when you record a point, that point not only involves like where the robot is, but it also takes into consideration which particular user tool are you using. It also takes into consideration if you have any specific user frames that you have set up. So uh, I would advise you to know which user tools and frames you're planning to use. So let's take a look at this. Um, shift coordinate. Um, right now we have uh, a tool 10 and a user 9. Um, and tool 10, I know that I had defined that before. That's uh, the little thing I put in the gripper that's kind of a pointer. And I don't want to use user frame number 9. That was something we created in a previous video. So I'm going to change that user frame to user frame 2, which, uh, again, shift coordinate, user frame 2, I'm pretty sure has not been used for anything. So we're in good shape. <laughs> user tool. Okay, user frame number two. So let's go ahead and start creating um, and recording some motion control programs here. And to do that, we're going to switch over to the, the robot itself and start driving this around and getting to those uh, destinations. So I'm gonna bring my Z axes down and again, I'm just going to record a program that would go from one point in the square to the next. Uh, 
All right, I'm gonna try not to get too fussy here. We're just basically going through the logistics of it. So I'm at that uh, corner over there and I'm gonna record a point. Now to do that with your teach pendant, we're gonna come over here and All right, there's the button right there to record a point. So if I do a shift point, that's going to bring this up, and it recorded that, and there's a little um, at symbol that's next to this that shows me that I'm at that particular position. Very good. So we've recorded that point. Now I'm going to go ahead and jog the robot around to another destination. So I'm going to move the uh, x-axis out. Well, we barely reached it. Okay, and back to the teach pendant. We're going to record that by going shift point again. So that recorded two points. And we just keep doing that as we assemble programs. So now we're going to move the y axis positive. That looks good. Um, again, I'm just using shift and point to record that. So now I've got uh, three lines of code in here. Okay, and we just keep going. So now we're gonna go X minus. All right, got it where I want it. And then back to the uh, teach pendant, we're going to go ahead and hit shift and uh, shift point, shift record that point. Now, this is interesting. If I want to go have it go back to where I started from, I can do another shift point here, and I can get into that menu and edit it. Okay, so I wish I had a little bit better view of what's going on here. But if I use the arrow keys to get into that line, I want it to actually go back to point number one. So uh, it says point number five. I'm going to put point number one in there and exit. And it should go back to that first point that it started from. And then I'm going to put in one more point at the end, shift point. And here I'm going to change the point that I'm at and make it go back to a, um, a home position, okay? So there are these globally known points out there, and I can choose that uh, choice here by hitting choice on the screen. Instead of going to just a regular position that's only known inside of this program, a position register, PR, is globally known, and we've got a few of those out there. I know that position register number one is the home position. And when I put that in there, it says PR1 home. So we're in good shape. Now, let's go ahead and run this program. I'm going to use my cursors to get over to the very beginning of it. And I'm going to put it in step mode so that I have to hit the forward button every single time to make it go. So right here on the, on the teach pendant, there's a button for step. And that highlights up here, turns on that step. And now I can hit the shift and forward. And by the way, I'm holding the dead man switch this entire time. So shift and forward should execute this one line at a time. And we can see where it's at in the program as I step through it. So that's what it looks like on the joystick. On the robot itself, this is what it looks like. And that's that position register home. Okay. So here's point number one at the very beginning of the program. Point number two. Point three. Point four, and then back to point number one. 
And finally, the last line of the program has it going back up to its home position. So uh, that is a very basic motion control program. And like I said, there's going to be more details coming with this. But since that program is selected in the teach pendant, this is the program that, the, that it's going to be running. So when you hit that select in here, what you're doing is queuing up that particular program. So when we put this in automatic mode, it would zip through everything. Um, so before we do that, I just want to turn off the step button. So the step is no longer highlighted. And then show you what it looks like when it runs this program from the very beginning one line at a time, it'll actually run every single line. So if I hit the shift forward button here, it will run through every single point that we recorded and I don't have to hit the step button. So the difference between step versus non-step is that it runs the entire program when, it's, when step is turned off. And when you have step turned on, it will only execute one line at a time. Okay, so that's uh, a very simple program and now we're going to run that program in auto mode. So the first thing we have to do is turn the uh, auto T1 switch to its uh, automatic mode. So I've done that. I don't have it shown in the video here. Turn off the joystick and clear out any sort of errors. So the fault is empty. And now I should be able to um, run the program simply by hitting the green button on the controller panel. And it tried, but uh, gave me an error. I have to reset the errors on the teach pendant by hitting the shift reset. And it just, uh, it saw me. That was the problem. It saw me again. This is a little bit difficult to do sometimes because the laser scanner sees me and it's hard to get that start button pressed. So it's kind of a design flaw, I think. There we go. We're able to run it now and I can increase the speed. So you can see in automatic mode, it should be running much faster. There we go. And it doesn't repeat because we didn't tell it to repeat. It was just a one and done program. So there we have it. That is our uh, very first program, short and sweet, how to, how to uh, create a new program. We also talked about how to drive the robot around and record different points and put those into the program. And we saw how to step through them as well as how to run it in automatic mode to test everything out. So um, that's a starting point, and now we're going to get into some more videos about all the little details of creating different motion control programs and the different menus that are involved. So catch you next time.